disintegration test okay so what is disintegration test disintegration test is always an official test your friability test is an official test disintegration test is official test dissolution test is official test your weight variation is official test uh, contain uniformity is official test general appearance and hardness these two tests are non official what do you mean by official test and what do you mean by non official test the test which are which are mentioned in ip are official test the test which are not mentioned in ip are non official test okay just to give you an example if you see over here this is an I, this is ip 2007 okay and if you see this disintegration test dissolution test uniformity of weight uniformity of content that is weight uniformity content uniformity and this is friability test okay all these tests are what official in ip they have given you if you see over here the disintegration test they have given you how you are going to perform the test okay what is going to be the equipment size how the equipment should be okay what is the, uh, on which are we what is what is the disc size that we are going to study over here okay what is going to be the methodology what is going to be the medium that you are going to use okay and everything is being given over here right if you see about the dissolution test again everything is mentioned over here right if you if you go to uh, your uh, friability test so this is this is your uniformity of weight right this is your uniformity of content and further this is your friability test which we have just now studied where they have given about the apparatus okay the weight the uh, diameter okay the curve projection of the inner diameter of the curve projection they have mentioned over here this is the method which with the sentence which i which i explained to you for the tablets with an average weight of 0.65 grams or less take a sample of whole tablet corresponding to about 6.5 grams and for tablet with average weight of more than 6.5 grams take a sample of 10 whole tablets that's why i'm telling you don't refer any other textbook if any other number is given that is wrong here they have given that you have to rotate the drum for 100 times know where the time limit of 4 is given to you okay and here it is given that it should not be the loss should not be greater than 1% okay understood there is one more sentence which is important over here if obviously any tablet you find that is cracked chipped or broken okay then you need not do any calculation that sim that uh, the sample simply fails the test okay that has been mentioned over here have you understood so everything that i am teaching is from this official book and hence we say that the tests are official in the similar manner the uh, disintegration test is also official in nature okay what is the importance of it whatever tablet when it goes inside it should disintegrate unless and until it disintegrates unless and until that tablet converts into granules and the granules converts into powder the powder is not the drug is not going to get dissolved and the drug is not going to get absorbed okay so for that process to happen the first step that should happen is the disintegration right in disintegration what what we calculate like in friability we calculate the percentage loss in disintegration we calculate the time that is required for your tablet to disintegrate so in how many minutes your tablet has disintegrated okay that it it has it has broken down into small small particle or it has disintegrated into the small small particle under the given set of conditions that set of conditions we are going to see okay what are the set of conditions so in what time it has disintegrated that time you calculate in the disintegration test disintegration test is performed for what all it is performed for uncoated tablet it is given officially entry coated tablet has been performed it is performed for pcs and also it is performed for suppositories for pcs molded as well as compass it has been performed from our point of view we are going to deal with uncoated tablet and entry coated tablet and also for capsules i forgot to write over here very importantly it is also performed for capsules so for capsules for tablets important from our point of view it is also done for pcs and suppositories okay moving further let us study about the disintegration test apparatus okay now disintegration apparatus consists of a basket rack assembly this is the basket rack assembly and this basket rack assembly is 
is placed inside a thousand ml beaker. So this is the outside beaker. In this thousand ml beaker, this basket rack assembly is been placed. Okay. Now what does this basket rack assembly consist of? This basket rack assembly is very rigid in nature, very sturdy in nature, and it holds six cylindrical tubes. So these are the cylindrical tube one, two, three. This is the fourth one. This is the fifth one, and this is the sixth one. So it holds this six tubes one two three four five six it holds six cylindrical tubes the dimensions of it are the length is 77.5 millimeter and the internal diameter is 21.5 millimeter <coughs> so it holds near about six uh, tubes six tubes okay as as this uh, this whole six tubes are suspended or this assembly is suspended okay with the help of a means so this is the this is by the help of a means it has been suspended okay and it is lowered and brought down so the movement of this assembly inside is up and down so there is an up and down movement of this assembly okay inside this beaker inside this glass beaker which is of 1000 ml where you place the fluid okay the fluid is placed over here and the assembly is moved up and down these tubes are holded okay by two super imposed transparent plastic plates so this is the plastic plate one and there is another plastic plate two okay you have two plastic plates and these two plastic plates hold these six tubes okay inside it the plastic plate the plastic plate which is there below to it a wire mesh is been attached okay this wire mesh has been attached and these are super imposed so whatever the holes are there to this plastic plate there are six holes one two three four five six these six holes are there okay and this six holes corresponds to the lower six holes that are present to the lower plate okay so you have plastic plate one plastic plate two both having six uh what you call that holes and these six holes are super imposed on each other so that these tubes remain in vertical fashion the upper plate okay this upper plastic plate is not having any mesh whereas the lower plastic plate is having mesh right understood the uh, it is a stainless steel wire cloth okay and the mesh size is 2 mm so that is the mesh size of it right got it and this is placed this basket is placed inside this beaker okay right let us move further i will go to the video first and then i will come back to this this is the water bath okay your 1000 ml is is maintaining the level of the in the water bath this consists of what you call that a heating uh, element okay these are the heating rods this heating rod is going to heat this water bath these are the 1000 ml beaker which i was talking about this 1000 ml beaker are going to contain the medium this medium would be a gastric simulated gastric fluid it may be water it may be uh, buffer solutions it may be acidic solutions it may be alkaline solutions this is the basket rack assembly this basket rack assembly can be suspended inside this uh, beaker the medium which is present inside the beaker is going to be heated with the help of this water bath this motor this assembly is going to move this uh, uh, rack assembly basket rack assembly up and down the tablets are placed in these tubes okay six tablets are placed in this tube This is the temperature probe. 
which is going to check the temperature. The temperature of the medium is maintained to 37 plus or minus 2 degrees Celsius. Why this temperature is maintained? Because that is the temperature inside your body, inside your stomach. What you are trying to do by this test is you are trying to mimic the conditions that are happening inside your stomach. So this uh, 1000 ml beaker, this 1000 ml beaker re uh, represents or mimics your stomach. So what happens when the tablet goes inside the stomach? Once the tablet goes inside the stomach, the tablet is going to bounce up and down. Okay, because of the regurgitation movement that is happening inside the stomach. In the similar manner, your tablets are also are going to bounce inside this tube. Okay. Is doing the settings. This is a temperature of water bath. Please remember uh, the temperature inside the beaker, that is the medium, should be near about 37 degree plus or minus 5 degree Celsius. So sorry. Which your next lecture, I'll just talk with the teacher that you're watching the video. Will be, you'll be joining later. Which is the lecture that you have further? Please add down in a chat box. Which is your next lecture? Gavde ma'am's lecture, sir. Jurisprudence. Okay, okay. I'll, I'll just message her. I'll just call her up. हेलो अश्विन मैडम थोड़ा सा तुम चले चला एक दाह मिनटे मुल्ले लेट जॉइन जाले चलते हैं का इधर वीडियोस वगैरह बकता है इतने चले ना ठीक है एक साधन हाँ एक साधन तो दाह मिनटे तो लेट जॉइन होते हैं ओके मैं डिसिंटेग्रेशन टेस्ट ही कोते हैं मैं मधे मैं मधे डिसिंटेग्रेशन टेस्ट चा ओके Okay, you need not worry. I have uh, spoken with your, uh, I'll talk with your teacher. We can extend our lecture by 10 minutes. Temperature probe is going to measure the temperature that is there inside the basket. So this dissolution medium, okay, should have a temperature of 37 plus or minus 5 degrees Celsius. This is in order to remove the water that is there inside the jacketed vessel. So this is a jacketed vessel water bath. So that pipe was to remove that water once the experiment is over.
and i have opened the chat box at any moment you have any question please do ask me in the chat box he has put the temperature probe inside that medium so this is the rise of temperature of the medium so as soon as it achieves the temperature okay it is ready to run the machine is ready to run one tablet is going to put in each test tube in each glass tube one tablet is going to place the test is carried out with six whole tablets once you start the machine okay the basket rack assembly it moves up and down inside this beaker now he has not filled the beaker totally if he fills the beaker with 900 ml or 1000 ml of the water or the medium dissolution medium the beaker is not going to move okay it is very sturdy when the vessel moves up and when this basket assembly moves up and down the tablet that is present inside the glass tube it also jumps up and down so whatever the movement of tablet is happening inside the stomach okay that movement happens over here also now for disintegration for the tablet when can you say that the tablet has disintegrated you will say the tablet has disintegrated when not a single particle of that tablet remains on the mesh okay so above the mesh the no tablet should remain it should it should disintegrate and all the particles should should fall from the mesh below inside the uh, beaker 1000 ml beaker okay understood the working of the machine right so yeah now let us go to this slide what does this slide type talk about okay so in order to perform the test what you are going to do is you are going to place one tablet okay in each tube so this is one tube this is the beaker i have just taken the example of one tube you are going to place your tablet over here right and this basket rack assembly you are going to position into 1000 ml beaker what it may contain it may contain water it may contain simulator gastric fluid simulator gastric fluid is the fluid which is similar to your a uh, gastric fluid that is present inside the stomach but you prepare in the lab or simulated intestinal fluid the fluid which is prepared in the lab but which is similar to your intestine okay intestinal fluid okay that is intestinal fluid you can take buffers you can take acidic solutions you can take alkaline solutions and that all are placed in this in this 1000 ml beaker then you place the backside that rack assembly in that you place your one tablet so one tablet is placed over here on this mesh what is going to happen and then you are going to start your uh, heating and you are going to maintain the temperature at 37 plus or minus 2 degree celsius when you start the machine what is going to happen this assembly is going to move uh, this uh, uh, tubes are going to move up and down once this tube moves up and down these tablets are also going to move up and down in the similar fashion like it happens inside the stomach so these tablets are also moving up and down right and after some period of time these tablets are going to break down into particles and these particles are going to lie over here okay inside the tube and there will be no tablet that is over here no particle will be over here 
when you see that no particle is lying over here and everything has come down inside this tube that time you will say that the tablet has totally disintegrated okay now how is the movement of this basket this basket moves up and down through a distance of 50 to 60 mm at a constant frequency of near about 28 to 32 cycles per minute in one minute it moves up and down 28 times okay or you can say 32 times it moves up and down in this frequency only it is going to move it cannot move fast or it should not move very slow in this frequency it should move and up till what distance near about 50 to 60 mm right now this assembly should be prepared in such a way this condition is also very very important please remember it uh, difficult to understand such that the tablet remains 25 mm below the surface of the liquid okay at any given moment of time when the tablet assembly moves up okay sorry let us, let us assume that it is moving down first okay when the tablet assembly moves down this let us assume that this is the water level okay let us assume that this is the water level then it should be this tablet should be over here it should not be on the surface got it so such that the tablet remains 25 mm below the surface of liquid on their upward movement so when there is an upward movement of this basket uh, of this basket rack assembly when the tubes move up this tablet should be placed 25 mm below the liquid and when the when it is moving down okay so supposing it is moving now down then it should not be closer than 25 mm from the bottom of the basket so this is the bottom of the basket your tablet should be over here 25 mm above so it should be there this tablet should lie in between here so the tablet should float in this way in between this in this way the tablet should float 25 mm above the lower level of your tube that is the mesh and 25 mm over here that is below the liquid so in this range your tablet should be floating okay that is the condition that has been given understood till here if i move ahead okay now if the tablets are floating if the tablet density is too low then what is going to happen the tablets are going to float on the liquid so if you if you have a tube over here this is your tube with mesh okay so this is a tube with mesh this is the mesh over here right and you place the you put the tablet inside it and this is the liquid this is the layer of liquid okay what is going to happen the tablet is going to float over here it is not going to go down if it does not go down it is not going to bounce up so it is not going to remain over here right we want the tablet to remain over here like it floats inside the stomach in the similar manner we want it to float but that is not going to happen because the density is too low so it is going to remain over here so it rem if it remains over here okay then what you are going to do then you are going to put a perforated disc inside it this perforated disc is going to make your tablet if you place it above this this is going to make your tablet sink down right so that is the use of this perforated disc how this perforated disc should be what are its dimension that are also given in ip i am not going into the detail of it it will be unnecessarily confusing you okay and as i have said once the tablet disintegrates all the particles should pass through the screen in the specified time what is the specified time that is given further let us move on to limits and standards of integration test now if, if you are starting with 12 tablets in the beginning if one of tablets fail to disintegrate or they do not disintegrate within the specified time what is the specified time what are the standards that you are going to see later but if one or two tablets fails the test then what you are going to do is you are going to carry out the further 12 tablets okay so you are going to take six tablets after second taking six tablets if one or two tablet of it fail then you are going to take 12 for the tablet if three tablets fails needless to say that the disintegration test has failed only 
up two tablets should fail the test. Then you can go proceed further. So then you are going to repeat the test with twelve additional tablets, right? If you are doing the test for capsules, then you are going to proceed with twelve additional capsules. Okay. Now what should happen? Not less than a sixteen out of the total eighteen that you have taken. So you have taken six first, and then you have taken twelve twelve later on. So out of these eighteen tablets, okay, sixteen should pass the test. Minimum sixteen to should pass the test. If seventeen, okay, uh, uh, pass the test, it is okay. If eighteen pa if twelve pass six pass the test, it is okay. If fifteen pass the test, then you will say that the batch has failed. Understood? So out of eighteen, sixteen should pass the test. So you are going to first once again I will repeat it. You are going to first start with six tablet. If all six tablet pass the test, then the test passes. You don't proceed further. If one tablet fails the test, then you are going to perform the test on further twelve tablets. Okay. Then twelve plus six becomes eighteen. Out of this eighteen, only one that is failed over here should fail. Okay. Or maximum two means one from this can fail. Okay, so sixteen should pass. Over here, supposing you have taken six tablets in the initial beginning, two tablets have failed. Take twelve tablets. Now all these twelve tablets should pass the test. Okay, so out of eighteen, your sixteen tablets are going to pass the test. If you take six tablets and three fail, then what you are going to do? You are going to say that the test is going to fail. Because if it will you take further twelve tablets, then also three have already failed. So out of eighteen, only fifteen are going to pass the test. Understood? Okay. So this is about the limits. We are going to see standard in the further slide. Now, further what I mean? Supposing it happens that your tablets have adhered to this disk, and because of adhering to this disk. The tablets have failed the test. Then what you are going to do is you are going to remove this disk, and then you are going to perform the test. Okay. This is about the limits. Let us go to the standards. Now it is said that if it is an uncompressed, uncoated tablet, then the limit for disintegration is fifty, not more than fifteen minutes. So within fifteen minutes, the tablet should disintegrate. So any tablet like Crocy, it is an uncoated tablet. It is a compressed, uncoated tablet. It should disintegrate within 15 minutes. And when will you say that the uh, tablet has disintegrated? When not a single particle remains onto the wire mesh. All the particles should pass through the wire mesh. Okay, within 15 minutes. If it is a film coated tablet, then it should disintegrate within not within 30 minutes. Okay, it should not get more than 30 minutes for disintegration. If it is some other type of coated tablet and not a film coated tablet, let us take an example of sugar coated tablet, chocolate coated tablet. There is some other kind of coating that is given apart from film coating. In that case, what you are going to do is the limit is given is sixty minutes. So for compression coated tablet, it is fifteen minutes. For film coated tablet, it is that is compression coated means a normal tablet, uncoated tablet. Okay, so for compression uncoated, it is not more than fifteen minutes. For film coated, it is not more than thirty minutes. And for uh, uh, other coated, other than film coating, it is not more than sixty minutes. And what is the medium that you are going to use inside that one thousand mL beaker? What medium you are going to use? You can use water as a medium. You can use cyanide gas as fluid as a medium, or you can use zero point one normal HCl as the medium. Okay. You can use. You have to use this to perform the test, and the temperature you are going to maintain at at seven plus or minus two degrees Celsius. Okay. If you have a dispersible tablet or you have a soluble tablet, okay. In that case, this soluble or dispersible tablet should disintegrate within three minutes. If you have an effervescent tablet, okay, then the quantity of liquid that you are going to take is two hundred and fifty mL as per IP. And as per BP, you are going to take two hundred mL, and this should disintegrate within five minutes. Got it? <laughs> If it is an oral dispersible tablet, oral dispersible tablet is nothing but 
malt dissolving tablet then malt dissolving tablet should disintegrate within 1 minute and if it is a buccal or sublingual tablet then these tablet for these tablets you do not do not perform the okay test the limits are not applicable but usually it should be within 15 to 30 minutes okay got it now comes the one which i have which i have talked about that is the entry coated tablet okay for entry coated tablet a special methodology is being applied for entry coated tablet what you do is in this beaker you take 1000 ml of solution okay you take sorry 900 ml of solution and which you take the solution that you take is 0 0.1 molar hcl first you operate the machine okay and after operating the machine you should see that your tablet should not disintegrate okay in the medium for two hours it should remain intact for two hours your tablet should not disintegrate because it is an acidic medium remember it is an acidic medium so it is a stomach in which your tablet is going it is an entry coated tablet so this entry coated tablet as it goes inside the stomach it should not disintegrate you are going to now change the medium from acidic medium you are now going to change the medium to alkaline medium so now you are going to take alkaline medium over here right the same tablet which is not disintegrated in your acidic medium the same tablet now you are going to put in the tube the same basket like assembly you are going to put inside the alkaline medium and you are going to operate the machine and now your tablet should disintegrate within one hour in your medium second so for entry coated tablet you are going to use two mediums you are going to first use one normal uh, one molar hcl in this one molar hcl your tablet should not disintegrate for two hours so it should remain intact for two hours then you are going to change the medium you are going to take the medium as mixed phosphate powder, having ph 6.8 this is the medium that you are going to take and now you have this entry coated tablet which does not affect over here okay should now disintegrate within one hour in your second medium.